Hi again everyone, how are you? This video is going to be about how to build your founding team. Right? This is an incredibly important topic because the founding team can make or break your company. Right? You can't, you can't do everything alone, but having a bad team is not going to have, make, get you to success either. So I'm going to cover some thinking points and kind of like some good practices of what you should be doing. Um, when you are building your team, right? And I'll cover a lot of mistakes people make and I'll, I'll kind of suggest what you should do instead. So the biggest question I guess is people ask is how big should a founding team be? And according to Paul Graham of the Y Combinator, which is the largest and most successful startup incubator um, ever, uh, he suggests two to four people, ideally three. The reason for that is one person cannot do everything, right? You cannot be the technical person, the fi finance person, the marketing person, the sales, can't do everything, right? Uh, but when you get to four or five, you already get into a little bit too many people. Um, and then every decision you have to make takes you know, a conversation of five people. Um, and that's kind of cumbersome because when you are a, a quick company, the strength you have is that you can move quickly and make decisions quickly. Um, and you lose that strength when you have too many people at first. So two or three people is great, right? And the skill sets for those people should be very balanced. Um, you know, the one person can be deep in the product, whether that product is a restaurant, a painting company, or a website. They have to have that really deep. Someone in your business has to have extremely deep expertise in your niche. Um, in that business niche, right? If you're a technical company, the technical person there must be extremely good um, because that's the DNA of your company. Now, uh, the other person, one person has to be responsible for growth. Uh, that's the marketing salesperson. And another person can be, you know, responsible for something else depending on what the business needs. Uh, or they can be another technical person or they can be another product person or they can be adding extra, extra help to growth. That depends on what you need. Um, but it's very important that the founders have a lot of expertise um, in that field. If they don't have a lot of expertise, they better have a lot of drive and motivation and hard work. Um, because, well, ideally they would have drive, motivation and hard work with expertise. But, you know, there are young founders and many of them are successful because they're so driven. And what happens is they're so driven that they learn on the job really quickly and they become good at what they do. Uh, so you kind of want, so just to recap where we, have, where we have so far, you want experienced people, two to four, maybe three people best um, with, ba with balanced skill sets. One mistake people make is, you know, they talk to their friends about their business idea and their friends get excited and they say, oh yeah, let's do this together. Okay, so they, they team up. Then they tell another friend and like, like okay, yeah, I want to do this, but you know, I can only do it part-time but I kind of want to help, right? And so they end up with people who are interested, um, in theory, with questionably, you know, questionable skills, skill sets, right? Like, you know, maybe the skill sets over, overlap or, you know, there isn't the balance and they're friends and it's like, and then when, you come, when it comes to actually working together, people who say they're excited are often, you know, they just say they're excited, but like it turns out they're busy or it turns out like, oh, you know, their job is, you know, or like, oh, maybe they works, their work habits are different from yours and you expect more from them. So uh, be careful when you're building a team. What you want to do ideally is for the co-founders co to have worked together before successfully, right? Um, that's the biggest, uh, probably single biggest, um, uh, you know, Wait, that, that like the factor of determining whether that team is going to be working successfully or not together to de working together successfully or not. Um, and again, Paul Graham from the Y Combinator, Y Combinator, one com y, sorry, Y Combinator Institute's Institute also to observes and, and tells that in his incubator, the, the teams that are successful successful are the ones who have worked together before, and the teams that are you know have like disagreements or do not find it easy to work together are ones who come to the incubator and it's, for, it's their first time working together because they don't know what to expect, they're under a lot of pressure 
and things the things crumble. But if you have already a working like relationship with the co-founders, then you're in much much better shape statistically. So statistics say if, you, if your co-founders are you know, if they have balance in skill sets and if they've worked together before, the chance of success of this company is much greater, right? So one, so one way to increase uh, if this, this, the potential success of your company is to, you know, don't, if, if you don't, if you have people that you know like that, that's great, but many people don't. So what people do is sort of give themselves like a little trial period. Like let's say you know they say oh let's work together maybe one month two months three months see how we click how see how it goes and then if it seems that we're working well together then we will become partners but not right away so it's important not to jump in right away it's important not to sign paperwork right away because um, you don't know you you know you may not know what you be, you'll be getting and you don't and, and it depends on the paperwork you're signing right especially if you're signing like that person owns fifty percent of the company or something like that you want to be extremely careful. Uh, and also, fifty percent is always bad, but but that that's because um, it's even. And but but that's another topic. Uh, for this topic, um, we're just talking founding teams. So just to recap, people worked together before, deep experience or um, real hunger and ambition. Not just saying that they're hungry and ambitious, but actually seeing them work like that. Um, and uh, you know, two to four people on your team. So if you write a business plan, that's what the investor wants to see, and that's the the results. Like coincidentally, that's actually the result. That's the, that's the team that's going to get you the best results, uh, statistically. And if you, on the flip side, if you have a business plan and you write like, ah, uh, you know, I'm learning this, and this person is excited, but you know they're new. Uh, another person joined. They're still in college. They're going to work part time. Nobody can commit full time. Uh, we never worked. You know, like if you have to, 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 when the investor sees that, their their mind shifts into a very different mode than if they read something like, oh, ten years experience here, ten years experience there. Uh, you know, oh, this this person is a real pro. Like I want to invest in that because it looks like they know what they're doing. So the investor's mind goes really different, and and also should so should your mind kind of shift and and react to hey you know are are you really going to be building that great nucleus right this is your nucleus for many years hopefully right so um you want to kind of get really really top people who will work together really well and teamwork is also extremely important if you can work together well and get through problems it, it's often much more important than uh various details uh, or even experience because a team that can work together well for the long term is a very powerful one so that's been it. That's kind of how you, uh, you know, that's kind of how you can, should build your founding team, and also that's how <clears throat> you kind of should think about how to write this business, the team section of your business plan. Um, you know, I, and you know, I just want to add a couple of uh, if you are, are looking for co-founders, a couple of places to look for co-founders um, are like industry events, local meetups. Uh, you know various like business networking things and it's recruiting um, so it, it will take many many uh, sort of times you would go there to these events it, it almost never works out from the first time you go um, recruiting is difficult and it's painstaking and it's not it's not fun after a while but you have to do it well because if you bring on a great person they can really make or break um, many things about your company so that's been it. Uh, now you know how to build a uh, founding team for a business that is pretty balanced and effective. Uh, so thank you for watching and please subscribe to the channel if uh, you, found this, you found this insightful. And I'd be also delighted if you checked out my mobile apps that I create. They're uh, problemio.com. They cover topics like business ideas, business planning, marketing, fundraising. And they're available on iOS, Android, Kindle. So problemio.com and please subscribe. Thank you.